Hey Sarnia, I'm Katie Horvath. This is called Into the City. I'm here today with Sarnia's Mayor Mike Bradley. Mike, thanks so much for coming and chatting thanks with you. me today. Um, so we are leading up to our election. Of course, this is a part of the election series. Um, and the first question I have for you, Mike, um, is if you could just respond and give us kind of your reflections on the current term of council, the 2014-2018 term. Well, the whole theme of my campaign is possible. So I'm ignoring the last four years. It was not a good four years for the city in many different ways. Uh, when I ran in 2014, the platform was very clear. Eliminate the debt, continue to reduce staffing through attrition and, uh, and job sharing and things like that. Uh, continue the level of services and uh, to, to bring all those things together and build the city. And all those things were stopped. They were stopped deliberately by the council today. And now we're taking on many more staff, more debt, and we've cut services. And that's not how you build a city. So I see this election as a reset election. But uh, uh, it's an opportunity for the public. If they, uh, if they like the direction of the city in the last four years, then endorse someone else. If they don't, then I will do my best with the new council and the community, because it is not just council. Council is just one factor in how it functions. Uh, I will try to reset and get us rebuilding the economy, uh, dealing with social issues that are massive in the community, uh, so there's addictions and, and all those other things. Um, but it does mean a, a, a real change in the people serving on council. Okay. Um, and so moving forward, if you are elected again as our mayor, what could we as citizens expect from you and the leadership um, from 2018 and onwards? Well, I go back to some of the fundamental things I've been involved with. This waterfront we're on uh, over 30 years, we've made this the only public waterfront I know in Ontario. Totally public and totally revered. Uh, the research park we used to build the economy here, over 2,000 people working there. And uh, we've got so many pilot projects coming through that uh, even if a small fraction belongs to major success from a pilot plan, it will create jobs in the community. That's the bioeconomy. That's uh, a combination of things. We're working on the Nation Bridge, which is to, uh, again, up our game as it relates to technology. And right now there's a massive fiber optics project going on in the city to, to assist with that. The left college direction is uh, doing a lot to steer us in the right direction because the community is trying to do the same thing. They're trying to find that, uh, that magic bullet that will uh, build their economy and deal with the social issues. It's not there, but you can bring it together with a collaborative community. And that's one thing I have been good with. If you look at the groups I chair, like the Research Park, the FMI Partnership in the last number of years, the Sarnia Police Services Board, we're doing some incredible things there, uh, precedent setting as it relates to First Nations relations. Those are the things that I'll continue to concentrate on. And so, um, as you know, of course, we're making a switch to internet voting this year. Um, so I know you've been vocal about how you feel about that issue. Um, we've touched on it a little bit. What I want to ask you, um, just as your final message, all-encompassing, um, what's your final message for anyone watching and the people of Sarnia? Well, on the issue of internet voting, you must recall in 2010 and 2014, I brought a forward. And at that time, the council of the day, quite rightly, could not get a level of security with it. The, to me, the issue is uh, internet voting, internet e-voting. It is happening in a number of communities. The issue is that there was no public input, no public consultation. And that's symbolic of what's going on. It's public consultation that suits the purpose. But in this particular case, because there was obviously a rush to get it through, and that rush, I think, was wrecked at perhaps diminishing the voting turnout if you're an incumbent. You don't want a high turnout. Not in my case, but in other cases, they didn't want a high turnout. It's the fact there was no public input. There wasn't dog parks. There wasn't trees. All these other issues, but not on the fundamental thing about how people vote. The, my campaign team is going to work it and we'll, we'll make it, we'll help anyone that needs to vote. Uh, but on the bigger issues, this, uh, the theme of my campaign is pride testing true. Um, you know, people know the record, they know what I've tried to accomplish, they know where I failed too, because that's part of life, right? If, if I got up every morning in this place where I live and said, well, you know, I, I'm just not going to try because we can't change things. And as a Mary, it's like the Olympic rings, there's like seven rings and they're all interconnected. Uh, working very quietly for the last year on the opiate addiction issue, which is massive here. For years, championing a withdrawal managed detox center. That should happen in the next six months. So you just keep pushing, and, and some days you, you make a lot of progress. Other days, you're stalled, but you keep going. That's why I don't give up on issues. 18 years ago, we decided we wanted to change, um, at least some of the industry people here, the economy. We need to get away from fossil fuels. 18 years. And we've had some successes, we've had some failures, but we keep on pushing because we're collaborating together. So my message will be a reset. Um, I, I really fundamentally need people who want change. I don't care where people are politically. I've met with many of the candidates running for council. I don't care if they're on the left or the right, the middle, wherever. What I do care about is their judgment and consistency of judgment. And the bigger issue for me is we need accountability back at City Hall. It's turned into Fort Sarnia now. 
it's a fortress of both in hours, it's a fortress of physical settings, uh, the way people come in there, they don't feel comfortable, and we need to get rid of that. We need to go back to being an open, empathetic city hall. And I always remember the ombudsman, uh, former ombudsman, years ago said, Sarnia was the most open government in Ontario, and we did work together on trying to make that message go across the province. I want to get that back, and I want an accountable, an accountable city administration at the top. The rank and file, the people that take care of these parks, the arenas, and the police, and the fire, they're good people, and they work hard. And I think they deserve to have the type of leadership that respects the political people, and the political people, in turn, will respect them. Because if you look again at the last four years, $20 million increase in budget on a 1% growth economy. More spending, more staff, and less services. That's not the package that I was elected on. I hope to reset that. Great. Thank you. I want to thank you again for coming out and chatting with us today. And can I mention that? This, Absolutely, This is yes. my parents' bench. I get to see this every day. It's in their memory. Uh, they love the waterfront. And it's, it's, it's a living memorial. But this is what has kept me going in the last four years. And I'm also, it sounds, uh, it doesn't sound right, but I'm glad they weren't here to see all what went on the last four years. Um, but their strength has kept me going. And this has been Sarnia's Mayor Mike Bradley, and elections are starting opening online October 11th through to October 22nd. And thank you very much for watching.